Hello and welcome to another video. We've owned our Tesla Model S now for about six months. And in that course of that time, we have put 14,000 miles on the car. And in fact, in the first three weeks of ownership, we put 9,000 miles on the car. So we've gone on a couple of road trips, one of which was a pretty substantial 4,000 mile road trip out to Illinois and back. And this road trip was with three young children in the car, five, ages five, three, and two years old. And we're actually about to go on another road trip out to Florida from Utah. And so in today's video, what I want to do is just show you the tools that I use online to uh, help plan my stops, help give me an idea of how long the overall trip will take, what routes we should take so that we can hit up the superchargers along the way, and potentially any backup chargers that we may need. And my uh, motivation for doing this is the it's been interesting to me as I've owned this car and told people what we're doing or been out on these road trips, how uh, uninformed a lot of people are about what uh, electric vehicles are capable of. And in this case, really mostly Tesla. There isn't really much competition for Tesla at the moment for long range EVs that have a great supercharger network that is fast. And so I want to show people what is possible um, and so I'm going to start by uh, showing the documentation around the planning of it uh, and then in the next couple of months I'm going to be releasing videos uh, recapping these trips that we've already gone on uh, as well as I'm going to be filming uh, these future trips showing uh, the, the, the details of the car of how well it performed in world, real world conditions. So right now I'm just showing you the planning stage and then in future videos I'll be showing you the actual road trips that we have gone on. And so with that, let's go ahead and jump in. First off, I wanted to show you here Tesla's own website uh, where it shows all of their superchargers and destination chargers across the United States. And this works in other parts of the world as well. Now, this is helpful for just getting a feel for where all of the superchargers are. And you can click down here and turn off the destination chargers. Uh, here the gray ones are the planned superchargers, so they're not there yet. And on any of these you can click on them and then it will give you information over here uh, about that supercharger. Um, now if you want to see the destination charging, which can be helpful for maybe planning where a hotel might be that you'd like to stay in, you can zoom into a, a region looking at just the destination charters, click on those, and you can find where those are. Sometimes they're hotels, sometimes they're restaurants, or potentially anything really. Um, that being said, this isn't terribly helpful for actually planning a trip. It's just information to see where things are. Now Tesla also has this part on their website, where so tesla.com slash trips, where you can put in uh, multiple waypoints and it will show you the route. And I'll jump over here to this tab where I've already done that. Um, that's nice. It shows you what the route planner would probably do that's built into the car. Um, but still not terribly informative in my opinion. So I don't really use this. So a better route planner. This is the best one that I have found so far. And as you can see, I was able to put in um, the same waypoints as uh, what the other one had. And it's now showing me a slightly different route. So th they're using um, different route finding technology. I'm not sure what goes on behind the scenes, but I have found that a better route planner um, does a little bit better job of prioritizing the charging time versus the travel time and it has you stop more often which in my opinion is a good thing. Um, for one thing we have young children and, and they need to stop regularly to run around and go potty and whatnot um, but also uh, it's important to stay in the faster charge rate of a battery. It does not charge at the same speed throughout its entire cycle. When it's nearly empty is when it charges most quickly and then as it fills up, the charge rate drops down and, and so it doesn't charge as quick. And so it's better just to actually drive from supercharger to supercharger, putting in just enough power to get to the next supercharger. And so over here on the left side, you'll see exactly that. Uh, we'll leave home at 100% charge. That's easy to do. It happens overnight. Uh, so we're able to skip the price supercharger that is right here in Utah, and we're going to be stopping at the Green River supercharger. Um, we're going to be arriving there with 13% battery estimated, uh, and we're only going to stay there for nine minutes to get to 34% to then go on to the, um, the supercharger down below for Moab. Um, so... If our battery was a little bit larger, we'd be able to skip the Green River Supercharger, of course, and just go straight on to Moab. Um, 
but this is what it takes for us. So this website is great. It gives you all of this useful information. You can scan down getting a feel for what the supercharger stops are going to look like, how often you're probably going to need to stop. And if one of the legs along here is being stretched too far, it will highlight that section in red. If you look in here in, in my particular route, this right here is Farmington, New Mexico and then it's going down to Albuquerque, New Mexico. And that's a pretty long stretch. Uh, if you look over here, you can see it's having us get up to 95% battery, which will take us an hour to do, actually a little bit over an hour. Um, we're timing our trip so that we're going to be stopping there for dinner, and so that'll be no problem. In fact, we might actually just let it go all the way up to 100%, depending on how the day is going. And so that'll give us plenty of buffer as it is, we'll be arriving in Albuquerque with 10%. And I've looked at this route and seen that worst case scenario, if we hit some terrible headwinds or bad weather in general, uh, we could potentially still come here to Farmington and then just come backtrack a bit and then go down here to Gallup. And that's a shorter distance that would you know, relieve that stress. But um, I, I don't anticipate there being any problems here, frankly. So, um, this is a really useful website and uh, I highly recommend it. And you can see over here the summary of the total durations of these different legs of the journey. Uh, and then down here at the bottom, we can see some summary down here. Uh, so total charge duration of 10 hours, uh, total cost of $162 if, if you pay for supercharging, um, duration 38 hours, and that's driving specifically. And then the total miles here would be uh, almost 2,500 miles, and then a total of 48 hours when you combine the charging with the driving. Now, the reality is this is going to be done over the course of four days, and each of those times that we stop, those three stops along the way, we're going to be charging the car to 100% overnight, so we're not going to be waiting for it. So this charge time over here is going to be a couple hours less, probably. Um, and so that will reduce this total trip duration as well because that charging is removed. The driving though is still accurate and that's going to be the case. Uh, I wanted to come back up here and, and show you a couple of other things about this website. Um, you'll notice that if you've made changes to a plan, you can click update saved plan. Uh, if you haven't saved a plan at all yet, you can click save plan. Now, it's a little bit confusing to know where to go access that saved plan, and to do that, you need to click over here and click on this back button, and here it says saved plans, and so what I have done is broken up our trip into at each day. So we have out first day, and then I have an out day backup, which is that Farmington route that I showed. Um, and then we have our second and our third day uh, and our fourth day down here. It doesn't allow you to reorder them, which is kind of annoying, but um, so create them in, this, in the order you want them to be listed if you're worried about that. Um, and then down here we have the back days and then I also have the entire routes out and back uh, so that you can just look at the entire thing. So this is helpful, of course, just to plan the, the trip and uh, be able to see more specifically what each day will look like. So as an example here, I'll choose our out third day. Um, it's going to re uh, show us that route. We're going to zoom out a bit here. Um, you can see here that it's going to be a total of nearly nine hours that day, which is not a terribly bad day. Uh, that's, that's actually pretty good for us. Um, some of the days will be a little shorter than that, uh, but some of the days will actually be longer. So if we look at the first day as an example, it's going to be a 12 hour day total. So we're talking, you know, leaving home at say 7 a.m. and getting to our destination at 7 p.m. But what I think that this does do well is, is it does encapsulate pretty much the entire travel day because we're going to be making sure that our breaks for eating or otherwise anything else are all within those charging stops. So I have found in our past road trips that this is actually fairly accurate as long as you only you know stay there at the charger stops as long as the car needs it for because that's what this is going off of. Um, something else back here, I wanted to go down through these settings. Uh, it, you'll see when it when you first load it, it just looks like this, which doesn't give you a whole lot of option. Uh, but if you click here on show settings, then it will expand that out. And there's even here more settings, so you have to expand that out even more. If you are in the United States, you'd want to change this to Imperial. Don't let that throw you off because it defaults to metric. Uh, and then up here, you can choose the type of car that you have. And it has all of the EVs out there, at least all the major ones, I believe. Um, 
and then you uh, have this reference consumption that you can put in there. It'll pre-populate it with whatever it uh, believes it needs to be. Um, but what I've done is I've uh, actually gone driving in the winter recently uh, in my car, drove 65 miles per hour for 25 miles on the freeway. And my reference consumption in that case was actually 300 watt hours per mile. Um, it obviously consumes a lot more than that. Sometimes I've seen it six, 700 watt hours per mile, but usually for a limited period of time while the cabin is being warmed up. In this case, I'm going to preheat the cabin from home while I'm still plugged in, and then we'll be uh, stopping at superchargers along the way, which keeps the cabin uh, warm and the battery warm and everything. So I don't expect there to be too bad a, of a, a watt hour per mile hit on this trip being winter time. Um, although there will be some. Uh, it also is helping, of course, that we're going south as quickly as possible, which is getting us into warmer climates where it's less affected. If we are going into colder climates, then I would have to ramp up on this uh, safety margin right here. Uh, safety, uh, sorry, the reference speed here, uh, I just put it as 100%, which means basically you're going with the flow of traffic. Um, if you're expecting to go faster and be passing a lot of people, you might you know, change that up a couple of percentage points. Um, I'm not sure what all the, of the speed limits are along here, but I, I believe 80 is probably about the fastest that I'll see. Um, I'm going to leave it 100%. I want my minimum charge arrival to be 10%, uh, and then goal is 10% as well to keep me in that fast charge rate at the low end of the battery. Um, down here, I've got the outside temperature set to kind of an average of um, what that region is going to see at this time of year. Because we're close to the trip now, I've actually just looked up the weather forecast, seen what its uh, highs are going to be and its lows, and I just picked a temperature in the middle. Um, kind of a rough guess, really, because you're going over a large period, uh, di distance of, of ground. It will vary uh, potentially dramatically over that distance. Um, now, with this wind section here, what I have here is a website called windy.com that shows all of the current uh, wind uh, across the United States and, and world. So I can zoom in here when I'm particularly trying to configure a better route planner, and I'll just click along here. So I'll start kind of along the route that we're taking, clicking on the map in a couple of different places, seeing the arrow in the direction that it's pointing, knowing the direction that I'm going to be traveling, looking at the speed that the arrow is going, and again, it gives me a general idea of what I can put in there. Uh, incidentally, down here in the Farmington section, you'll see that the prevailing winds are from the uh, out of the northwest to the southeast. And in this case right now, it's actually pretty strong up in the, the eight, 10 to, uh, 8 to 10 miles per hour range. Uh, and that's going to be good for me going out. Uh, if I was coming back along this route, that I would need to make sure I'm aware of that, being that this is a longer distance, I maybe would want to take my backup route. But in our case, we're going to be going home a different way entirely, so that doesn't really matter. This website has a wealth of other weather information as well, uh, but just for the sake of time, that I'll, I'll leave it at that for now. So coming back over here, if, if you know you're going to be driving through some rain, you can put that in there as a, a wet section. Um, I've put in about 500 pounds for all the people and, and things that we're going to be taking. Uh, our car has around 35 to 4% battery degradation, so I've thrown that in there. And then timed open charge port is calculated in. And I've just told it to just route me to superchargers. They're just so much faster and easier to work with, and we have free supercharging anyway, so that's all I want to work with. And that's the settings that I have done. And, and so on each of these saved plans, coming back over here, uh, for each day, I have modified those plans or, or those parameters slightly uh, based on the region and, and what we're doing. So the reference consumption I lowered as we got down into the warmer climates. Um, and then the, the temperature here I have modified. And then the wind I modify based on what I'm seeing on that wind map um, and expecting the winds to probably be similar. Uh, although it, you know, if you're really concerned about it, you can check it right when you're going on the trip. But I have found uh, it to not usually a big deal. Um, if, if you're going to be going through a region that is typically really windy, like up here in the you know Montana, Wyoming area, you'd probably want to be a lot more cognizant of the wind and those factors. 
Okay, so that's the routing in general, and it's um, definitely helpful to be able to see just the route you need to take and how long it's going to be taking you to get there, but that's not everything. Uh, when it comes to the, uh, you know, when the, the plan for where we're going to be stopping for the night, I typically just pick large cities, and I pick ones that have superchargers in them so that I have backup in case the destination charger at the hotel or maybe the friend or family's house that I'm staying at um, has uh, problems and, and doesn't work. Um, and so we just picked a couple of, of cities across the way to try to cut up our trip into bite-sized chunks that are tolerable for us. Um, the one website that I have found that is helpful is bookings, uh, booking.com. So I've searched for Albuquerque, New Mexico in this case and given it some example dates. And then there's this setting that's really helpful. If you scroll down here a ways, there is a section here called facilities. If you click here on show all, there is this electric vehicle charging station checkbox, which will filter down to only the hotels that have an electric vehicle charging option. Now, you have to be careful with this a little bit because sometimes hotels will say that they have electric vehicle parking, where the reality is they only have a standard 15 amp, 120 volt outlet that might be within proximity of the parking lot, but is woefully inadequate to charge a long range uh, electric vehicle overnight. Uh, in my car, if you had it plugged into that type of outlet, would take a solid three and a half or so days continuously plugged in to completely fill the battery, worst case scenario. So that's no good. Um, so that's why I picked cities with superchargers in them. And I actually also looked these up on the map. I click here on show map and uh, just check to see if it's within fairly close proximity to the uh, supercharger in the area so that I have some nice convenient backup. So anyway, I found that's a useful thing to use. Now, if you start getting off the beaten path, um, you know, superchargers are great on the major routes, but uh, when we went to out to Vernal, for instance, this last summer, uh, it is kind of out there in eastern Utah, up here in this area, and is not... It, it, there are no superchargers and there's no the way that we can drive from our house all the way out here to Vernal. We actually stayed up here at Steinacre State Park and um, there's no way to go round trip there and back. Um, now in this case I called the campground ahead of time and I'm actually the one that put this site here on, on uh, PlugShare and uh, showed that they have super or, sorry that they have destination uh, outlets available there. These are the NEMA 1450 outlet type and so the, they're meant for RVs, but I called ahead and they said, sure, you can uh, plug in there uh, with your Tesla. And, and so I did. So this is actually my entry there into PlugShare. So feel free to, you know, PlugShare is a crowdsourced uh, website. So you can discover outlets that are available and put details in here about those outlets so that others can uh, take advantage of your learnings and your pioneering the way, so to speak, ahead of them. So PlugShare has a lot of things about it that are great uh, that I highly recommend. Now there is another website called EV Trip Planner, which is a direct uh, a competitor or uh, alternative to a better route planner. Um, I tried using it for a little bit and didn't really love its interface. Uh, so take it for what you will. Uh, it, you know, if you like it better, then by all means use it. it. Has a lot of the same options. Now another tool that I use is just Google Maps. Um, obviously, I use this on my phone. I use PlugShare on my phone as well. Um, they, they have apps there, of course. Uh, but when I'm planning a trip in general, I will use Google Maps for just using the street view or the satellite view of where I'm going to stay. So as you can see, I save locations regularly. These uh, yellow stars that show up on the map are various destinations that I'm interested in, uh, maybe stopping and visiting at as, while we're traveling and sightseeing. Uh, there are the hotels that we're staying in, um, you know, friends we're staying with, all kinds of things really. And so uh, this is obviously very helpful. Here's another website I wanted to point out that I found. Now, uh, this is from 2014, so potentially a little outdated, although my Tesla is from 2015. This is somebody that was trying to figure out what is the ideal speed to drive at uh, in order to optimize the amount of time it takes to get there, but also versus the time it takes to charge. And you can see here that going 75 miles per hour is actually the most efficient but 80 isn't too far uh, behind it and 85 isn't too much either. If you come down here and look at these uh, columns here, you can see here the 75 is a total time of 124 and a half minutes versus 
124 and 0.7 minutes. So I'm planning on probably going 80 wherever I can if the speed limit allows for it. But even 85 is not bad. Um, and so Teslas are, are very efficient uh, with their um, drag coefficient going pushing through the air. Um, so that's what I've been happy about is that when I've been going on road trips, I sometimes will um, just go whatever the speed limit allows for and, and the range keeps up just fine. So I hope that was helpful being able to see the tools that I have found that are helpful for planning road trips. If you have any other tools that maybe you have used, then feel free to post the, about them in the comments below. Um, and feel free to subscribe to my channel if you'd like to get uh, the updates automatically of my future videos that I'm going to be posting about our road tripping experience with three young children in the car. And if you plan on buying a Tesla of your own, feel free to use my referral code that is down in the description below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.